Hello, everyone. We are honored to have a chance for presentation in the 26th MovieCon. The title of our work is From Relative Azimuth to Absolute Location, Pushing the Limit of PIR Sensor Based Localization. This is a collaborative work by Beihang University, Huazhong University of Science and Technology, and University of Texas at Dallas. The technique of device-free localization has attracted much attention. Of course, it does not require the target to wear any devices. In practice, the technique has been widely utilized in many fields, such as intruder detection, smart home, and smart factory. Recently, more and more researchers start to utilize PIR sensors for device-free localization. Of course, PIR sensors can work in dark and private environments and have a low cost and low power consumption. The basic idea of traditional PIR-based localization system is relatively simple. At first, they deploy abandoned PIR sensors in an environment, and the detection zone of the PIR sensors are partially overlapped. Then, when a person moves into different areas in the environment, different PIR sensors will be triggered. For example, when a person moves into area E, sensor 1 and sensor 2 will be triggered. Then, when a person moves into area D, all of these three sensors will be triggered. Finally, when the person moves into area F, sensor 2 and sensor 3 will be triggered. However, to achieve high localization accuracy, the traditional methods usually have a limitation of high deployment density. Of course, these methods transfer the PIR sensor's analog signal to binary information for localization and cause a severe information loss. To reduce the deployment density, a new trend is to deeply explore the analog signal of the PIR sensors. For example, some researchers propose to utilize a machine learning model to map the amplitude of a PIR sensor's analog signal to the direction of a person for localization. Similarly, another method proposes to utilize a machine learning model to map the amplitude of the analog signal to the distance of a person for localization. Although the above two methods start a new trend for PIR-based localization, they both utilize a data-driven model and therefore require a high cost of training in practice. To improve the practicability of PIR-based localization system, we propose a new method called PIRATES Pirates is built upon the physical character of PIR sensors and does not require training data like the above data-driven method. Pirates mainly contains two steps. First, it utilizes the analog signal of a PIR sensor to estimate the person's asthma change based on the physical model of the PIR sensor. Specifically, the asthma change is a value that's much related to a person's location. For example, when a person moves from point A to point B, his asthma change to sensor 1 is theta 1. Second, after achieving the person's asthma changes to several PIR sensors, we build up an equation set about the person's asthma change and locations. After solving this equation set, the person's location can be obtained. Before introducing the method for asthma change estimation, we first introduce more detail about the principle of a PIR sensor. A PIR sensor contains a positive element and a negative element. The output of the PIR sensor is essentially the difference between the positive element's output and the negative element's output. In addition, the detection zone of the PIR sensor contains two parts, 
i.e. the positive zone and the active zone. Next, we explain the PIR sensor's principle by an example. When a person moves into the positive zone, his infrared radiation will achieve the positive element, and then the output of the positive element will rise. Subsequently, the output of the sensor will rise also. Next, when the person moves into the negative zone, his infrared radiation will achieve the negative element. Then, the output of the negative element will rise, and the output of the positive element will fall. Subsequently, the output of the sensor will fall. Finally, when the person leaves the sensor's detection zone, the output of the negative element will fall, and the output of the sensor will rise again and become static. Next, we will introduce how to estimate the azimuth change through the analog signal of a PIR sensor. In practice, a PIR sensor is usually equipped with a Fresnel lens array to enhance its resolution. Specifically, when equipped with a Fresnel lens array, a PIR sensor's detection zone will be divided into many small fan-shaped positive and negative zones. Then, when a person moves in the PIR sensor's detection zone, the sensor's output will fluctuate like a sine wave. For example, when a person moves into the positive zone 1, the output of the sensor will rise. When a person moves into the negative zone 2, the PIR sensor's output will fall. Next, when the person moves into the positive zone 3, the PIR sensor's output will rise. Finally, when the person moves into the negative zone 4, the PIR sensor's output will fall again. It can be seen that the number of the rising and falling edges in the sensor's analog out output equals the number of the function zones crossed by the person. Based on this conclusion, we can calculate the person's azimuth change to a PIR sensor by the product of the number of rising and falling edges and the average angle between adjacent fine-shift zones, i.e. for product theta c in this situation. However, we will encounter some challenges to obtain an accurate estimation of the azimuth change. The first challenge is that a PIR sensor's analog signal contains rising and falling edges not caused by Hellman motion. Generally, the edges not caused by Hellman motion are of two kinds, i.e. the noise edges and pseudo edges, and we should remove them to improve the estimation accuracy. Before introducing how to remove the noise and pseudo edges, we first introduce their causes. Generally speaking, the noise and pseudo edges are caused by the PIR sensor's unsatisfactory amplitude frequency response. Specifically, a PIR sensor essentially can be seen as a bandpass filter, which suppresses the high frequency and ultra low frequency of its input signal. Next, we explain the cause of the noise edges in more detail. Through experiments, we find that the input components corresponding to surrounding noises usually have a low frequency. In contrast, the input components corresponding to human motion usually have a high frequency. Therefore, even a weak surrounding noise source could generate remarkable edge in a PIR sensor's output signal. Then, we explain the detailed reason for the pseudo edges. Ideally, when a person stops moving, the input signal of a PIR sensor will become static immediately. However, 
since the ultra-low frequency components in the PIR sensor's input signal are suppressed, the PIR sensor's output signal cannot become static immediately when the person stops. To remove the noise and pseudo edges, we utilize an inverse filter. The inverse filter can suppress the components of noise signal with low frequency and can also compensate the components of static signal with ultra-low frequency. Specifically, the transfer function of the inverse filter is the inverse of the transfer function of the PIR sensor. Therefore, the output of the inverse filter is essentially the input signal of the PIR sensors, which is the difference between the heat fluxes of the sensor's positive and negative elements and is called as DHF for simple. It can be seen that in the DHF signal, the edges caused by human motion can be easily distinguished from the edges caused by noise and the pseudo edges are removed. When we estimate the azimuth change, we will encounter another challenge the abrupt turning. For example, when a person moves from point A to point B, he will cross seven zones and the PIR sensor's output signal will have seven rising and falling edges. However, in this situation, using seven multiply theta c to estimate the azimuth change will be inaccurate. The reason is that the sign of the person's angular speed changes at point C, and we call this situation as abrupt turning. Therefore, to obtain an accurate estimation, we need to determine where the abrupt turning happens. Next, we introduce our method for abrupt turning detection. This method is motivated by an observation that the abrupt turning could generate an unusual peak or trough in the PIR sensor's output signal. For example, when a person arrives at point C, which is not the center of zone 4, the PIR sensor's output signal will not rise too much because a part of the person's infrared radiation has not been focused on the sensor's negative element. At this time, if the person turns and moves to point B, the sensor's output signal will decrease. Then, an unusual trough in the sensor's output signal is generated. We say the trough is unusual because the height of the edge before the trough, i.e. H1, is evidently lower than the height of the previous edge, i.e. H2. Therefore, we could detect abrupt turning by judging whether peak or trough is unusual. Specifically, the criteria is that if H1 divided H2 is smaller than the threshold T, the peak or trough is considered caused by abrupt turning. To alleviate the influence of undetected abrupt turning, we propose to shorten the observation period for each azimuth change estimation because this method can reduce the probability of having abrupt turning in an observation period. However, using a short observation period may suffer from another problem, i.e. the boundary effect. Specifically, this edges on the side of the observation period always have extra parts outside the observation period. This effect will cause an overestimation of the number of edges. To alleviate the boundary effect, we propose a double window technique. Instead, directly identifying the edges number within the short window, we first identifying peaks within the long window, and then count the edges that falling into the short window. For example, in this situation, 
the number of edges in the short window can be calculated by this formula. Having obtained a person's azimuth changes to several PIR sensors, we can build up an equation set about the azimuth change and the person's location based on the cosine law. After solving this equation set, we know the person's location. Next, we will introduce how we handle the multi-person scenario. Since the rationality of this method is complex, here we just briefly introduce the basic idea, and the detailed discussion can be found in our paper. In the presence of multiple persons, the DHF signal of a PIR sensor approximately equals the summation of the DHF signals generated by each individual person. Through abundant simulation and experiments, we find a conclusion that the number of rising and falling edges in the mixed DHF signal equals the number of the rising and falling edges in the DHF signal of the person who has the largest azimuth change. Multiplying both sides of this equation with the average angle between adjacent fine shift zones, i.e. theta c, we can obtain the maximum changes of our person to this PIR sensor. After obtaining the largest azimuth changes, we can also build up an equation set about the person's locations and largest azimuth changes by the cosine law and the person's location can be obtained by solving this equation set. Here we illustrate our experimental setup. The PIR sensor and the Fresnel lens arrays utilized in our system are both of the shelf. The ground truths of our experiments are collected through a UWB localization system whose average localization error is about 10 cm. In this slide, we demonstrate the localization performance of our method in the single-person scenario. It can be seen that the average localization error of our system in the single-person scenario is about 64 cm. In this slide, we demonstrate the localization performance of our method in the multi-person scenario. It can be seen that, in the two-person scenario, the average localization error of our system is about 86 cm. In the three-person scenario, the average localization error of our system is about 105 cm. Here, we also compare our method with a method that utilizes a machine learning model to estimate a person's distance for localization. For fair comparison, we use the same traces and performance metrics as theirs. It can be seen that the localization performance of our method is about 20% higher than theirs. In addition, the deployment density of our system is only half of theirs. In conclusion, our work mainly have two contributions. First, we propose a new localization method which utilizes the target's azimuth change to infer its localization. Second, the proposed method is the first non-data-driven PIR-based method that utilizes the analog signal of PIR sensors for localization. In the future, there are still some interesting directions for further research. For example, how to improve the localization accuracy in multi-person scenarios, and how to optimize the deployment schemes of the PIR sensors. Thank you for your listening.